Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I'm gonna do a Maiden on the Extreme Flight Laser V3, and I'm also gonna show you my Express LRS and Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 gyro setup. Before we fly, let's do a quick little build recap on what I've got going on here. I went ahead and used the Extreme Flight X-Power 22cc motor, and I've got an XOR 16x7 prop, and see I've got the white with red tips. It looks very cool, I think. It looks very cool. And on the inside, I've got the Maytech R24D, so that's a dual antenna receiver. I've got my little Maytech uh, 3D printed mount in there, and then I'm running a Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 for a gyro. I only use these for wind rejection. That's my primary use for them. But I know a lot of folks are interested in how you set these up with an Express LRS setup. So on my Discord, under the Edge TX channel, I'm gonna include my radio setup and I'll also include some screenshots on how I set up the A3 Super 4. To get the signal from the receiver into the A3 Super 4, I am using the PWM converter board. That's the Maytech CRSF-PWM-C converter board. I like these because I like to get voltage and current on planes like this. I also wanna point out that I use very, very short leads for the battery. We really don't wanna extend the ESC leads by much, so I've got about maybe two inches per lead per pigtail, so four inches total extension. I think that'll be okay. For the ESC up front, I'm running a Hobby Wing 80 amp Platinum V4 Pro. To round out the power system, I'm using a Liperior 6S 4000 40C battery, and that puts the balance point right on the spar, exactly as the manual says, right there in the middle. So perfect balance point with the battery right there. And then for the servos, I'm running the Emax 9252s. I got these directly from Emax. These are really nice servos. They're actually helicopter servos, but they've got plenty of torque and speed for a 3D application. And then notice I also use the Extreme Flight 1.25 inch extensions on those servos. Regarding the build or the assembly on this plane, it was just spectacular, but I do have a gripe. This is a V3 plane and they didn't include the quick disconnect side force generators. And I know a lot of you 3D guys are gonna be like, yeah, whatever, man, why do you use those anyway? I like them, all right? And if you're gonna do V3, come on, Extreme Flight. It's a V3 plane. Give us the quick release, give us the quick release side force generators. That's a really nice feature when you're putting these together at the field. All right, that wraps up my build recap on the Extreme Flight Laser V3. Let's go fly it. Okay, this is the maiden flight of the Extreme Flight Laser V3. Before I take off, I'd like to do one last control systems check. I expect the elevator to come up, and it does. I expect the rudder to go right, and it does. It should go left, and it does. The elevator should go down, and it does. The right aileron should come up, and it does. The left should come up, and it does. Okay, and power. We're good on power. All right, time to maiden. Now I'm gonna do my normal maiden work first, and the idea on that is to make sure the airframe is square, and then after I've done that work, then I am gonna go ahead and run the gyro and see how the Hobby Eagle A3 performs with the uh, laser and the Maytech R24D. I do have the servos all set for 330 hertz plus, so 333 packet rate on Express LRS, and I've got 330 on the Maytech converter board, and I've got 333 on the Hobby Eagle. Okay, here we go, maiden flight of the laser. Okay, nice, that X-Power pulls pretty hard. Actually like that. Need a couple clicks of right aileron. And uh, that feels like that's it. <laughs> Couple clicks are right. Good so, to go, huh? And that's what I love about these extreme flight planes, man. They're just so straight. Okay, first up, I'm gonna do the, the inverted test. So this is gonna be a 45 degree up line, inverted, and oh, perfect. Just a slight nose down, so I like the balance point already. Very slight nose down, no issues there. All right, yaw test. Yaw test, we simply go straight up in the air, kill the motor, and we see which way the nose goes. Oh man, was that a slight nose left? I think it was. So I'm gonna give it one click of right and I'm gonna do it again. But that was pretty straight, to be honest. All right, here we go, throttles off. 
Yep, straight down. I can take that. All right, and the last thing I do for the airframe piece, just to make sure the airframe is square, is a loop. And I do the loop because I'm looking for tracking. I want a nice straight track through the loop, and that tells me if I have a nice parallel line between my horizontal stabilizer and my elevator, or sorry, my horizontal stabilizer and my wings, and that was very straight. I had to make a little wing correction, but that's not, that wasn't a tracking issue, that was just wing. Okay, so I think that airframe is square, and uh, that's it for the maiden checks. Everything there checks out. Now I want to do a knife edge. <laughs> I want to see, coupling is one of the things I like to look for these days. Uh, I know on my game bird that thing is really neutral, so I like to check for that. So I'm going to do the knife edge. I'm going to go, I'm going to go into high rates, put it in the knife edge, and I'm just going to check coupling. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Man, I love extreme flight planes. They're just so good. We'll do it with the wind and see how that works. Yeah, solid. All right, I'm going to do the Harrier. Uh, I like to do that into the wind for the first time, so I'm going to turn back to the left. And I need to get myself set up a little better. Oh my gosh, real nice. I'm gonna bring it a little closer and a little lower so you guys can get a better look at how it's doing in this Harrier. Wow, man, that is almost stopped. Wow, beautiful. Very nice, man, very, very nice. Okay, Game Bird's got some competition now. I'll tell you what, I'm <laughs> impressed, man. That is a really straight flying airplane. Awesome. Yeah, real nice, man. Good airframe. That's the first time I've seen you do that. I pull all kinds of tricks. <laughs> you pull a lot of tricks out your hat today, that's for sure. Get some! <laughs> yeah. That was awesome, man.
Almost, it's, that's gotta be awesome handling plane, huh? It is really good. It's it's like I talk about on the on the game bird where it's confidence it's inspiring. Yeah. You know, because it's it's flying really really well. That's so risky for me. <laughs> That's a brand new plane. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I haven't hovered like that outside of a simulator, you know? Yeah. Oh, you know what I didn't do? We didn't try doing that uh, life edge elevator. Oh, yeah. Is that that widget you using calling out percentage? That's the uh, power meter. I think I think Rob found it. I think it was for helicopters. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure where I found it. Yeah, that's the one I posted yeah, like last year. Yeah, I could never get the damn thing to work. That's the one. I got it working. Yeah, Rob had it working too. Last thing to do is the gyro check. So I told you guys I wanted to try the gyro. I'm gonna make sure I've got my gain set at about 50%. So about 50%, there's wind rejection on the gyro. And we'll just do a flyby and see how it does. I wanna check for flutter. That's what we're looking for when you initially run some wind rejection is you wanna check and make sure you don't have any flutter on those surfaces. No oscillations. We do have a little bit of wind. Say no problem there. That looks very good to me. And I'm going to do the auto level mode. I haven't done like a cal, I did do a calibration, but I haven't calibrated it to the plane yet. So when I do auto level, I don't know if it's going to pitch up or down. That may be something that has to be uh, adjusted on the bench because you do need to do a bench calibration for that. But I'm going to give it a try and just see what I think. And I'm going to gain a little altitude first. All right, so here comes auto level. And uh, yeah, okay, absolutely spectacular. So that's the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 doing auto level. I'm going to do it again. Okay, here's auto level. That's hands off. I'm not flying that plane. It's doing all the work right now. And if anything, I probably need a little bit of down pitch. So I think it believes it's a little nose down. So I need a little more up pitch on the front nose of the airplane in order to do a calibration. So it flies a little bit straighter. But as far as straight and level, it was beautiful. Okay, here comes the first landing. Wow. Game, Nailed it. Game Bird is going to have some competition, man. I don't even know what to say right now. Extreme Flight, you guys are knocking the cover off the ball. And guys, I know I've been on a bender with Extreme Flight lately, but I promise you, <laughs> I promise you, Get yourself an extreme flight plane. Even if you can only get one, get one. These planes are, I've just, I have not been let down. That is a amazing flying airplane. It is at least I'd say 
for what I did today, at least every bit as good as the Gamebird GB1. And it looks fantastic. So I just got to give big props to Extreme Flight. I hope you liked the Maiden video. The next thing I'm going to do is go back to the shop and I'm going to give you a look at my radio configuration and I'm going to put a couple screenshots in on the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 so you can get an idea how that's configured. And then the other thing I want to show you guys real quick is the R quality on that flight only went down as low as 92%. So 92%, which is beautiful, and the RSSI went as low as 83 on the first antenna and 84 on the other. So yeah, no problems, man. I really like what's going on with Express LRS. I definitely found my Mac Daddy setup, man. The R24D, the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 with the PWM converter board is an absolutely spectacular arrangement for a very nice airplane. And I want to point something out to you guys. I don't put these on little cheap planes. I put them on nice planes because I don't want to hear how will it do on a real airplane. That's a real airplane. That's as real as they get. So that setup will work just fine on just about anything you can throw at it. All right, let's head over to the shop and take a look at the software setup. This radio configuration is just the normal stuff for dual rates, so nothing really to see here. I've got a weight of 100% with an Expo 40, and then 40% for weight on low rates and an Expo 20. So that's it on the inputs, just high and low rates, very basic configuration on that page. But to work on the Hobby Eagle, there are a couple of additions. So on channel one for my mixer, I've got my port aileron. On channel two, the elevator. Three is the throttle and four is the rudder, just like normal. Channel five is the arm switch. And keep in mind, the reason I'm broadcasting that is because I'm running Express LRS. So Express LRS needs to see an arming signal come on channel five or aux one, and that's set up on SH. On channel five on the PWM board, I just skip that one and leave it open. I could remap it, but this is a 10 channel board, so I just skip it, doesn't matter. For channel six, I've got my mode switch and that's controlled by SC. And then on channel seven, I've got my gain and that's set on S2. And I'd like to show you my gain curve. Now the idea behind a gain curve on here is to limit the amount of gain that you can send to the controller. And I do that because these are big surfaces and they're digital servos. So if you have a full sweep gain, it'd be really easy to get into a situation where you've got some flutter. On this curve, I have my high point set to negative 20, which is just a little bit below the halfway point of travel. And by using that, I found out on my gyro that I still get plenty of gain, but I don't ever get into that scenario where I might see flutter on the surfaces. I'll show you what that looks like on the gyro in just a minute. And then finally on channel eight, I've got my starboard aileron. So that's it, that's my mix setup for this one. Now let's flip over to the workspace and we'll take a look at how this matches up on the Hobby Eagle gyro. Remember on my radio, I'm using my SC switch for mode, and that's what controls the flight mode on the gyro. So I've set positions one, two, and three to be off, normal, and level. That's another thing I really like about the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 is that you have the ability to assign what mode based on the switch position. Not every gyro does that. A lot of them are hard-coded. This one gives you the option, so I think that's really cool. The Hobby Eagle has some really nice programming aids built into the software, and I want to point those out to you. So if you look at the flight mode box, I'm only using three positions, although you could use six and this would be a natural fit for the RadioMaster TX16S. It's got that six position switch up top, but I'm only using three. I'm using off, normal, and level. And then if you look down here in the status bar, you see that it says level right here on the bottom underneath the mouse. Remember my mode switch is on channel six. So when my SC switch is all the way up, I'm at 100% travel. And if I bring that switch to the middle position, we go to zero and notice the mode changes right here on the status bar to normal. And that's position number two. And then finally, I'll bring it all the way down to the SC down position. That will give me negative 100, and that is gyro off. So that's a very cool little technique or aid in using the A3 Super 4 to set up your plane. Now for the gains on the laser, I used the values of 60, 60, and 65. They seem to be very effective. I didn't have any problems with that as a basic gain, and that is an increase from the default of 50. And I did that just to give myself a little bit more authority and a lower remote master gain. And then on the level gain, I use 60 and 60. Those are the only real adjustments I made. I don't use the hover mode. I don't really use the angle gain and I don't really use the lock gain. So those aren't really applicable in this configuration. For the wing type, of course, we use standard mount orientation. I just did it flat with the heading direction, this little arrow on the front of the unit facing forward, no problems there. The receiver, I have it set for standard PWM and we're using the protocol Fataba high tech Wi Fi. I don't really know why that matters. It's standard PWM. The other thing I'll point out if you're using PWM is that you can ignore these channel numbers. Those are really more of an S bus or PPM thing. If you're using PWM, the channel number is dictated by the wire itself that brings it in. So don't pay attention to the channel number on the right. It doesn't exactly match up with my inputs, but that doesn't matter because the channel numbers are not used when you use PWM. 
And then you can see I've got my elevator, aileron, aileron one, aileron two, and then my mode switch shows up right there in the middle. And finally the gain. Now I wanted to show you the gain. Remember I said it was about 40% at the peak and you can see right down here in the status bar with my gain turned all the way up and I'll show you the channel monitor right here. So the gain all the way down, I'm at negative 100 and with the gain all the way up, I'm just below that halfway point. Remember I have that negative 20 value and you can see on the gyro it's showing a gain of 35 percent and that was sufficient to get me very comfortable control throws without going into flutter this was the thing i wanted to point out by using the curve on the gain knob is that you can avoid going into a scenario where you apply too much gain and introduce flutter to your airplane for outputs and servos remember on the a3 super 4 there are five outputs and you can assign them to whatever you want in my case i have out one going to the first aileron out two going to elevator, out three going to rudder. I could have put throttle on here if I wanted, but there is no point. I just have the throttle connected to the CRSF-PWM-C converter board. It, either one would be fine. In my case, I just left it on the converter board. So out three is set to rudder, out four is set to aileron two, and out five I actually have inhibited because I don't have any real use on this plane for an output that the gyro recognizes. I mentioned in the video that I had to do a level calibration. You can see I actually did do a level calibration, but it, I think it was off just a little bit because in the level mode, it felt like it was climbing just a touch. So I'll probably do another level calibration and maybe give it a little bit more pitch nose down than I originally did on the first calibration. That's it for my software configuration on the Laser V3. I'm gonna go ahead and put the gyro setup and the model configuration setup together in a single zip file, and I'm gonna put them in the Edge TX form on my Discord and I'll pin it. So look for pin messages, and it'll have a file up there with the name Laser V3 somewhere in the title. It'll have both my gyro setup and my model setup in the Edge TX channel. The next thing I wanna do is give you a quick look at the telemetry I got off of the receiver, just so you can see how the Express LRS 3.0 RC2 is performing. Here's my receiver quality on that flight, and notice I had a receiver quality pretty much always at 100%, and I had a few drops all the way down to 98. So absolutely nothing to worry about there. That actually looks really good. And the other thing that I saw on that one that I really thought was kind of cool is my transmit power. It was at 25 milliwatts the entire time. The radio didn't even see fit to increase the transmit power at all. It was at 25 milliwatts. And then RSSI, you can take a look at that, but by itself, RSSI isn't a great indicator because if it drops too low, then the radio just boosts the power a little bit. In this case, I got as low as like negative 80. So, and then here's the RSSI from the second antenna and you can see they basically tracked each other. It was very close. So all I can say is that the radio performs exceptionally well and paired with that A3 Super 4, just a solid setup for this type of plane. No problems at all. All right, let's head back to the field and wrap this thing up. All right, guys, that wraps up my build recap and my maiden flight with the stabilizer and radio setup on my Extreme Flight Laser V3. All I can say is I'm hooked, man. That's a nice airplane and a fantastic power and radio setup, really good. Take a look at the flag too. That wind rejection was doing its job. That's what I was dealing with when I was flying. You can see the little flag at the end fluttering in the wind a little bit too. You couldn't even tell when I had that wind rejection mode on on the plane. It was just flat as a pancake. Damn nice looking plane. I'll yeah, tell it you, is. You, Isn't uh, that a neat scheme with the red, white, and blue like you, that? You took to it like a duck to water, too. I mean, last time we were out, we were talking about how you were comfortable with the other plane so fast, and you just <laughs> jumped head first into this one. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, man, it's a lot like that game bird. I kind of yeah. thought it would be when I looked at them together. Well, I mean, you made a bold statement earlier. I, I didn't say anything, but I was kind of surprised when you called about the out game bird the game being bird the to this. Yeah. Best, my best all-time plane. Yeah, you've been bragging about that one pretty hard. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this one's got some work to do, but I'll tell you what, man, I can see it kind of cracking into that into that echelon, yeah, no yeah. question about it, man. It's a, it's a good flyer, and it looks... I mean, the looks are, to me are fantastic. That is an awesome looking airplane. I like it. I like the graphic scheme. It's different. You know, it's not the normal stripes and swoops and check marks yeah. you normally get. It's a different kind of layout. And it's red, white, and blue. Yeah, I love red, white, and blue for sure. No doubt. All right, guys, if you like this kind of material, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Later, folks. Get out there and fly something. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.